Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on printer components, consumables, and interfaces. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to cover the requirements from our essentials exam, 220-701, section 1.11, where we need to install and configure printers. We need to know the difference between a local and a network printer. We need to understand printer drivers, especially as how they, they work in a compatibility between different printer drivers. And we also need to look at consumables, what's used for a printer to be able to operate. Let's start with how we might connect a printer up if we were going to plug directly into the computer to the printer with a wire in between. Those are still used quite a bit in many environments. Usually, we don't see some of these older methods to do this, like a serial connection. You don't run into that very often any longer. But some of the really, really old printers didn't have another way to connect. And so they use serial connectivity to be able to do that. If you're finding that you've got a printer that's connecting via a serial port, it's probably time for a new printer. I'll tell you that right off the bat. There's also times when you might find something like a parallel connection. These tend to be a lot more common with our legacy printers. It's a very specialized type called the Centronic plug that plugs into those legacy printers. But we needed a printer type that was standardized for printers. And everybody tended to use the Centronix connection on the printer and a 25-pin parallel connection back on the computer. So the vast majority of legacy printers you'll run into will probably be using that parallel port on the printer on the parallel port on the computer and the Centronix plug plugging directly into the printer. Generally these days, however, we tend to find that most printers are connecting via USB. Very standardized format. We don't have to have a big parallel port on our printer, on our printer or our computer any longer. You don't have this big Centronix plug that always tended to fall off of the printer anyway. Much smaller, much more compatible, and these days much more common connection might be a USB connection. Sometimes you'll run into firewire connected printers. Those are very, very specialized. You don't tend to find firewire being used for printing, although there have been capabilities and possibilities in certain printer types and computers where firewire may be the appropriate kind. We also tend to find on very, very old printer configurations, especially uh, plotters and other specialized devices, where you might have SCSI. SCSI was a standard type and is still a standard type that can be used for a lot of different things. But you tend to only find it for hard drives these days. It would be pretty unusual to find a locally connected printer through a SCSI connection. In most work environments, you really don't have the luxury of having every printer connected to everybody's individual workstation. Usually you have a printer that's in the center of the room, the center of the floor, and people will print to that central printer. Well, to be able to do that, we still need to connect the printer somehow. And we tend to do that with things like network interface cards. This is a network interface card that might slide right into the back of a Hewlett Packard printer to be able to set this up as a print server. So all we would really need is an Ethernet connection that we can see right there we slide this interface in, we plug in our Ethernet connection, and now it's on the network. And anybody else who's on the network is able to print to it. These days, some of the newer printers don't even worry about wired connections. They use wireless connectivity. Here's a good example of a wireless interface. If you don't have wireless built into your computer, you can plug in a USB connection to the printer. And this is a wireless connection that connects to your wireless network that you might have already. A number of the newer printers, especially some of the all-in-one or small office printers, have a little antenna on them. And they'll just directly connect to your wireless network. Makes it very, very easy to be able to print to that printer you can move it wherever you'd like. As long as it sees the wireless network, it's able to print just fine. You'll also see wireless connectivity on some older printers that is infrared. So you have to have a very small connection, a short connection between your computer and the printer. And that has to be line of sight. You may want to go back and look at our video on those laptop technologies, the communications technologies used for laptops. Infrared was one that you just don't see much any longer, but you still see it in use, especially with printers. And lastly, Bluetooth, an emerging technology that's used for much more than our Bluetooth headsets these days. We're using it for our laptop uh, keyboards. We're using it for mice. And we're also using it for printers as well. So you may see a Bluetooth printer in your environment. 
Whenever we're working with printers and making sure that we're able to print properly to a printer, one of the fundamental things that has to be working perfectly is the printer driver. The printer driver, and even a scanner driver in the same way, has to be specific to the model that we are using. For instance, if we were installing an HP printer, notice that you've got all of these different HP printers here. In fact, here's an HP LaserJet 8100 series that one talks PCL. There's a driver that talks PCL6 and another driver that talks PostScript. It's all the same physical printer. But you want to be sure that the driver you're using is going to match the configuration or the capabilities of the printer that you're connecting to. So you want to look at that language. You want to be sure that you're using the appropriate paper tray that's determined by the printer driver. The colors and capabilities for that printer are also wrapped up in that printer driver, along with fonts and any other options that might be available. If you were to look at, for instance, at two printer drivers side by side, you would really see the difference. This one's for an Epson La Action Laser 1000. This one's for an HP LaserJet 8150 series that's using PCL as its communication method between the driver and the printer. That's what that that's the language that that printer understands. You can see on the Epson Action Laser, the driver only has an upper tray, a manual feed tray, and a lower tray. That's it. That's all that's available on that printer. So therefore, that's all you're going to be able to see in that printer driver. If you look at an HP LaserJet, there is a printer auto select that you could set up. There's a tray 1, a tray 2, a tray 3, there's a tray 4 both the two types of tray 4s, a 2,000 sheet and a 500 sheet. There's also a tray 5 that you could also have in this device as a 500 sheet. There's a manual feed and a separate envelope feeder. You would never have access to these unless you had the appropriate driver loaded. So that's an important thing to consider whenever you're setting up your printer driver for the first time. Even if it says HP LaserJet 8150, make sure it is completely accurate with the type of printer you're using. If it's set up to use PCL and not PostScript, make sure you're using the right printer, or else when you try to print, you may not get the output that you're expecting.